So I'm probably going to voice over all this because you're probably going to hear me breathing and other stuff that nobody would want to hear. So this is my War of the Roses, War of the Roses project. And I am painting actual miniature figures, but I have to do like 200 plus and it takes a while because I'm kind of slow and lazy. So what I'm doing is I'm using the book, you know, Battle of War of the Roses or whatever it is by Peter Dennis. And in that, you can photocopy or print out these pages and you can make these up and turn them into actual stands. So, for example, here is a completed one. So you see, there, so a Lancastrian one, you see it's completed. So make all my bases out of chipboard, approximately 40 by 30 millimeter, and you'll notice they're not exactly perfect, but I needed it to be quick, so I just made some quick cuts and everything. Because if it's not quick, I should just be spending my time painting more miniatures. So this had to be quick. So the way Peter shows it when he does it is he cuts and trims all the way around it. And it does look better, but again, it doesn't match my requirement of being quick. So when I do it, it has to be quick. The only stuff I really trim around is when there's banners so for the command stand so to speak so that allows the banners to kind of set off I didn't do that for every single one of them but I started doing it so the process printed out now he does it on regular printer paper so I do it on cardstock if you're going to try to trim all the way around the figures you would want to use regular paper you don't want to use cardstock but because the way I'm doing it I want it a little bit more solid so I use cardstock there's two ways you can Try to score your lines with it all one big thing, but I've taken to trimming out these guys first. Let me just and these are unliveried bowmen. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. There'll be a catch-up phase here, but... One thing about this, you only need three of these standalone ones, because there's only three sets of stands. And so they come with five. So I usually just pick whatever three I'm going to use, and I'll discard the others. Well, not discard them, but I put them off in their own pile. So then they have the little banner thing, and there's some additional banners in the book and everything, but this is the little banners. So I'll put those off to the side too. And you see I have some in mid-flight here, but I wanted to show the process. So I will trim around all this stuff. And then what you do, I'm just going to show, let me trim it all out so it's ready to go. And again, I do stuff to save time because when he attaches his, he glues this little fake base thing all the way around the base. This little grass stuff. I don't. I trim it off at the edge. I do that because to me it's just not worth the extra step. Like I said, he's down. So what you do here is you want to score each of these lines to make it easier when you fold. So and he does not use a ruler and neither do I. So sometimes mine are not exactly perfect. 
So. And again, you want to make sure you're not going all the way through. See, I missed that one. Because I'm rushing. And mine got off the line. I'm normally a little more precise, but I normally don't have something strapped to my forehead like a moron. Testing this out. Half the time the camera turns off on my phone. And so then I'm talking and thinking I'm recording and I'm not. And then I get exceedingly upset. So I hope that's not the case this time. So that's how those you score those because this is eventually what you're going to do because they're going to look kind of like this and then you'll glue a front rank here so you kind of do this thing and then that's where i said he will tuck this around and glue it over the edge i just trim it off there so just to show on this So as I go, so now I will do this on the score. Again, I'm not going for perfection, because in the, the day, like the, and this artwork is phenomenally done, but to me, it's never going to be a natural replacement for true miniature figures. So to me, it's just a good stand-in. So I'm not going for perfection, because again, if I was going to spend that extra time, I would do it on that. So that's your basic thing. So then, what I do from there, I use just you know, old school glue stick, which now comes in purple, apparently. Just, you know, do that and when you just glue them together. And then, so I'll go through and I, I would have cut all these out and done these as well. So I would have scored these and I would be gluing a lot of the stuff at once. Now with these ones here, I'll usually, sometimes I'll do it after I glue it, but a lot of times I'll just kind of trim some of the excess away from. Like I said, I encourage you to watch his video. He does a technique where he like trims it all out around. It does a phenomenal job. See the little sharp edges? So when I glue this together, I'll take some of that glue stick under my fingers and just rub it on the sharp edges. And to me, that's good enough of a representation. So, these guys I've glued the first and second rank. What you have to do here, I take this and just try to get it in this little crevasse. Usually I'm drinking some beers while I'm doing this because it makes the tongue go by. And I just press and hold for a little bit. I don't want to come loose, but... I let this, and I try to let this piece because this is the one that has a harder time staying together. I let that dry. And then once it dries, I glue this onto the base. So, which I will show. I really hope I'm still recording too and I'm not just talking to myself like a fucking moron. Okay. So, so then I would go through and do all those. That's going to be two ranks right there. So for simplistic simplicity's sake, 
I'm going to show this next part. It's a little out of order how I usually do it. But then I take this stuff, Elaine's original tacky glue, which you could probably use this stuff or any PVA sort of thing. Or really anything you want. I think Peter used some special kind of glue, but his video, I forget what it's called. I looked at it, but to get it in the United States, it was small quantity for a large price tag. And it didn't look like it would offer anything that this wouldn't do. So now I glue this onto here like so. And because I'm not doing a perfect job, there's usually some gaps. That's why I use the thicker glue instead of a glue stick on this. Precisely because of that. And so. And then try to get as even as possible so the things look kind of even. And then I will set this off to the side, but what I will do is once this glue dries, I come through and trim that off and trim that off. I'm going to make some movement trays. I'm going to put some actual flocking material on it, I think. I haven't decided yet because, again, I just want it to be kind of nice and simple and easy. Once I trim that off, and then I will attach the front rank. In this case, this is supposed to be partially harnessed infantry. So for the command stand, I'm going to put some actual harnessed knights. And then the rest will be liveried billmen. I'm using the Poleaxe 2 rule set to represent some of the battles. It's an older rule set. It's by the Lance and Longbow Society. And I think it does a great job of representing that time period. And uh, so even right now, it's a little hard to move. So I think it's got a little evening issues there, but it's all right. I'm going to go ahead and just still a little early because this will want it to flip up when it does that. Plus, I don't like getting glue on my scissor. This nice fluorescent scissor. I seem to muck my scissors up every so often. My wife was helping me to attach some grass mat and we're using double-sided carpet tape and got that shit all over these blades. And we just got these. But she did a pretty good job cleaning it up. All right. So. I usually, like I said, there's usually some evenest things. I try to pick the ones that look the best to be the command ones. I'm going to go with this one on this. So again, I'm going to take this guy here. These blasted Lancastrians. And then for, it's certainly this one, I use the, and you could use the glue stick, I'm sure, but I just use this to get a nice good bond since it's attaching the, so, and they'll probably lean a little bit until they, f and then I'll bend it into place, but I like to, so. There it is. So it's not hard to build these stands. They go pretty quickly. If yeah, you see my little workstation there or some stuff. I got quite a bit of stuff there. Um, and so I'm also working on some carts. This one is a work in progress. So for a wagon logger for Blower Heath. So that's where we're at. That's how you do this. Thanks.